Hey there everybody, it's Tyler with Outboard Specialty Tools and today we're going to be going over how we can use the bubble purge kit uh, that you, you guys have uh, probably seen by now uh, to do a couple of different things that we haven't shown in the past. One thing we're going to be doing is uh, doing a system flush on the steering cylinder here um, to just get old fluid out so we can prep everything for new fluid going in. And then we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a we're going to fill the system and bleed it using C-STAR's uh, standard operating procedure. So without further ado, let's uh, get rolling. Before we go much further, I'll just show you guys some of the differences of our uh, new kit. This is the uh, second generation of bubble purge uh, that we have out there. This is the one we'll be selling in the 2020 um, season. And basically all it is is a bottle cap, bottle attachment, fill tube, and cylinder attachment, which most everybody has seen. And then also it has a threaded fitting that goes in the helm to connect up to our uh, bottle fill tube. And this is a fill and primer fitting, which we will show you guys how this thing is used in just a minute. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get moving on our system flush. So when we're flushing these systems out, really pretty easy process using the bubble purge. First thing I'm going to do, connect up our cylinder attachment. Then we're going to connect up our primer fitting. Um, and that The flush primer fitting also uh, allows you to connect into the cylinder attachment so that you can open the attachment up. So now this thing, the with this on it, it will allow fluid to go through the attachment. And so that's how we're going to set up right now. Have everything going into a bucket. And we are going to flush out the port, port side hose and port side of the cylinder. And to do that, you steer, you would go up here to the helm and turn the helm to starboard. So right now I'm going to go turn to starboard should see that port side line start producing pretty quickly. The other thing I've done is removed the fill cap off of the reservoir so that it can pull air in as fluid evacuates out of it. So turning to starboard, should start seeing some air dribbling through there pretty soon. There we go. Looks like our, star, our port line is uh, opened up and it's started to push air out and probably doesn't have much fluid left. So you can see here we have removed the fill cap so that the reservoir can pull air. And again, we are turning the wheel to starboard, which will pressurize the steering hose and on the, le the left side or port side steering hose and port side of the cylinder because to turn the motor to starboard to turn the motor to starboard you actually need to press create pressure on this side of the cylinder so that it moves everything over yeah it'll bring the motor over towards this side which allows the boat to turn to starboard okay now we're going to do the same thing we just did except for on the other bleed fitting so bear with me while we get this switched over As you can see, these uh, bleed fittings are kind of old. A little bit of corrosion on them. Do be careful when you're spinning them. Don't want them to break off. They shouldn't do that, but it's always better safe than sorry. Okay, that one's opened up. Oops. probably far enough. Now, trick is 
we're doing this as a one-man show here. I want to make sure that this thing doesn't just pop right out of this bucket and start launching fluid everywhere. We'll see how that holds up. All right, moving on. All right, so again, we are on the right side or starboard side of the cylinder here. We're going to pressurize the line that feeds it. We do that by turning to port now. So here we go, turning to port. You can see, turn to port. Getting some fluid coming out of there now. Yeah, nice. So you can see it's pretty easy to use our uh, bubble purge just with the uh, primer, the flush and primer fitting to very quickly flush these systems out. Obviously this is a smaller system. You know, we should have mostly air in here, so I'm just going to push this over here. Give us another turn to port here. Same thing over here. Built up a little bit of air pressure in there. Be careful with the air pressure. Try never to open these bleeders up unless you got something on them to take the pressure. So, do this with this one. That fluid you see coming out, the fluid you see coming out while we turn the motor all the way to lock to lock. When the, when the motor's over there, that's the fluid, the, the, the piston on this rod sits about right in here. Let's move the, move the bore over this way. It's compressing all that fluid out and pushing it out through the bleeder. Turn this to... Starboard here. That's all the fluid. All right. Okay. So that... Oh, don't want to pull that side back in, do we? Okay. At this point, our helm and our cylinder are empty. All right. On to the next step. Now we're getting everything prepped to do a bleed. Thread our I'm gonna disconnect here. I'll show you why in a second. Get our bottle cap threaded on. Okay, with this this cap threaded on, this this thing should be sealed tight. Squeeze it like I'm doing now. Drop it, nothing should happen. Now, next thing I'm going to do is we got old fluid in here. So I'm going to connect up like this way and this way right here to flush this crud out of here. So I'm going to make sure this is our helm fitting here. Trying to keep our helm. I don't want our helm fitting to go down in this old fluid, so I'm just letting it sit right here for a second. Connect up our primer. Give our bottle a little squeeze here, and we are flushed. All right. Nice. Oops. Now, next step. Fill tube attachment coupled back in. I'm going to use my fill tube with the primer fill fitting on it. Let's 
So here's our primer slash flush slash just about everything fitting. Can put this just gently feed this down into the fill tube here. I mean into the reservoir fill. Gently squeeze. Don't squeeze too hard because this thing can fill up a lot faster than you think. So we're just gonna fill this by hand so we can get our helm pump all nice and primed up. Take a little bit of air. Squeeze it back in some more. All right. Okay, well right now we have fluid basically up to the top of the threads here on our, on our helm fill. Let's see if we can get it to take any more before we connect everything else up. Okay, yeah, that's as much as she wants for right now. I'm trying to make a huge mess doing that, but we are playing with oil, so it's always easy to make a mess. All right, now, helm fitting. Thread that in there remove our flush fill primer fitting, connect up bottle fill tube, and we are ready to get this thing primed up. For right now, I'm just gonna leave this. Right here, right here. Okay, the first thing you'll notice is you can see some air kind of bubbling out of there. That's pretty normal for uh, the helm to let some air percolate out. And just pick the bottle up. Okay, here you can see in a bit more detail we have bottles just kind of resting up here on top of the console. We made this fill tube long enough to where you should be able to let the bottle sit on top of most consoles for most of your smaller boats maybe not on like the 52 scout or anything like that but now all i'm doing here is just kind of squeezing some fluid out of the bottle which is pushing fluid into the helm which is then pressurizing the air out of there so you can see it's you know the helm was already pretty much full whenever we primed it earlier with our primer fitting um but you know this just helps us get additional air out of there you want to make sure the helm is as full as it can be before you start using it to push the fluid out of the rest of the system. Now we have flushed the entire system out. We are doing a fill and a bleed using C-STARS uh, standard operating procedure. And so you guys saw earlier that we filled our helm back up um, using the basic priming procedure uh, that we went through with the prime fitting. And at this point, the helm's pretty full. You can see fluid up to here. I'm just going to give the bottle a little squeeze and try to get any, see if we got any other air that wants to come out of there. Okay, now the next step in C-STARS method is we're going to go come back here and make sure our bleeders are closed. So, let's see here. Okay, starboard is closed and port. Okay, now bleeders are closed, back up to the helm we go. Squeeze it too so we can get some more air out of there. All right. So now, in their method, you have bleeders closed, helm is primed and filled. We are going to start turning to starboard or clockwise. And that is going to push fluid into, let's see. That is going to fill the port side hose and the port side of the cylinder. Now, since we do still have a lot of air in there, it's gonna take a minute, it's gonna build up pressure because it's having to squeeze down a bunch of air before the fluid will actually do anything that it's supposed to do. 
pulling a lot of fluid out of the bottle, so I'm going to vent the bottle here in a sec. So that's as easy as doing this. Okay, we'll let some air into the bottle, just hold the valve open like that. Not sure if you can hear that, but that's the bottle taking on a bunch of air. All right, click it back in. And now we're back in business, just turning clockwise, starting to feel the pressure build up inside the helm. Bunch of air feeding up out of there. She's wanting to go. She's wanting to go. Get her some squeeze here. Get the rest of that air out of there. Now, if you turn back to the motor, the motor is starting to go over towards the port side lock. It's not doing it very well because we still got a lot of air in there. Once we get all the way to the port side lock, So, next step, we're going to crack open our starboard side bleeder. Before I do that, I'm going to get this connected up. Any pressure or anything like that that's in here, we have our stuff connected up so it can vent out. So now we're going to connect up our primer flush fill fitting. We are ready to get this thing opened up. Okay. Now, C-Star also uh, specifies that you hold the cylinder in place with your hand during this next step of the process. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, so I've got a little trick that I use for that. Right here. Okay, so instead of putting your hand on there, I use a very clean chopper leg. Put that over the piston rod. Fancy piece of custom PEX tubing. It's not custom. I bought this at Lowe's and cut it with a saw. And instead of putting your hand on there, you use your channel lock, your vice grips as a as your hand. I don't like using your hand to try to control any hydraulic device. Because your hand will always lose. I use this PEX tubing to protect the piston rod because I don't want to ruin it. Okay, so now our starboard side bleeder is open. We are going to bleed that line next up here. Here we go. So, everything happens counterintuitively with these systems. So we are bleeding the starboard line, we will turn to port. All we're doing is filling the port line until we get a good stream back there. You can see bubbles and air pushing out of the cylinder now. Should get most of our air out pretty shortly. Okay, that's still pretty darn good right there. Good. No air coming out. All right. Pause that for a sec. Let me know. Our starboard hose is primed. There may still be a little bit of air in there, but for the most part, it is in good shape. So now we close our starboard bleeder off. 
side is now closed off. Remove our clamp. And now we'll come back up and continue to turn to press. So. Lots of air coming out of there. And as you can see, turn to port. It's starting to turn. A lot of air releasing out into the bottle here. Right, now we're going to connect over to the left leader. Shouldn't need to clamp this thing in place. Oh wait, yeah, we do need to clamp it in place too. Doing this without thinking a hose. Okay. All right. Did we open up on this side yet? No. Okay. So now we're going to open up on the port side. Is open. And we will turn to start. Now we feel good on the starboard side. Most of our bubbles are out. That's nice. Okay, now we have both of our bleed valves closed. So let's see how the steering feels. At this point, we followed Seastard's method to a T. First bottle has run out. We've got a little bit extra here. So we're going to switch our bottles over real quick. Because we want to make sure we keep plenty of fluid top of the helm. We want to have fluid pushing down on top of the helm at all times. Don't want this thing to run out. The helm loses prime. It will definitely pull air into the system. Alright, so now we have our system more or less closed off. 
the uh, well it's open here and connected up here but um, the definitely can feel some air in the home still Turning starboard now. Starboard feels better. So what I'm going to do now? Connect up our connect up our attachment over here, and then find the remaining bubbles in the system. bubbles to deal with. Sometimes they're easier to track down back here than they are to push them up to the helm. Alright. So, shouldn't have much air left in here, but let's just see. Making sure we got prime up here. Definitely some air pushing out of the home. Not too bad on the cylinder. Not seeing much air in the cylinder there. Okay, got a big bubble coming through right there. Here's what we're going to do with that. We're going to let our big bubbles rise up here. So we got a bubble in the top here. Let's see if I can get that one out of the other one to work up here. Just let that guy rise on up to the top. While we're doing that, we're going to connect in our primer flush fitting one more time. We're going to work this guy out like this. Push the motor over, let's see here. Can't compress it out of here. Basically we're using the motor and the cylinder like a, almost like a hypodermic sort of situation. Just basically using it as a plunger. You saw how we pushed that bubble out of there. Open that back up. And we're off and running. Okay, just continuing to turn here. More big bubbles coming out. Right now, the other side of the cylinder is pretty well primed up, so I'm going to have to actually use the steering wheel to push this one out. So, let's see here. If it's on the left side, I turn right. So, I'm just turning starboard. Helm's feeling much better pressure right now. Okay, got a good stream there. So now, oh, that was not bright. As you can see, this fluid in there is nice and clean after our flush. Okay, so continuing to turn, bleeders up. Should be getting to where we got a few bubbles in there, but not enough. Okay, 
can turn back up here to the helm for a second. You can see we do still have some air working out of the helm. So I'm just giving that stuff a chance to vent out. Eventually the air in the system runs out of places to hide. Keeping an eye back on the cylinder. Any big bubbles that come in there, like that one right there, I'm just going to vent them out. Yeah, we look on our lock, so turn Got plenty of air working out of the home here. I'm trying to give it a chance. Not seeing much back there. The cylinder looks like our hoses look pretty good. So this air that's coming out is either very close to the helm in the hoses right behind the helm or just working out of the reservoir and the piston pump itself. Push this back over to the other lock here. Okay, we got some air bubbles flying up right there. At this point, we shouldn't really have much going on back there at the cylinder. And just circulating around see what we got. Looks really good back here. Not much in the way of bubbles. Fluid's nice and clean. Not even seeing any tiny little micro bubbles. Alright. Alright, so you can see we got good. Everything's nice and solid there, no bubbles. And we're in good shape up here at the helm. Last couple of bubbles coming out right here. Should be very little air, if any, in the system at this point. So right now I have the attachment on there with both bleeders open. Just circulating it around, seeing anywhere where air comes out, we can get at it.
right, that's good enough. So now, go ahead and close our system up. Step one in that process is go ahead and disconnect our fill tube. And we're going to go ahead and disconnect and unthread our helm fitting. Have a, have a rag handy just in case it starts to overflow. You can see we're full all the way to the top of the threads here. That's all factory spec. Okay, close our bleeders up on the back. I don't want to disconnect the cylinder attachment until these are closed off. I don't want to give this thing a chance to take any air on. Out. So most Sea Star homes, you go in lock to lock, you should get about four turns and some change, maybe four and a half turns from lock to lock. So let's test. All right, we are on starboard lock, so we should get four to maybe five turns going towards port lock. One, two, three, four, and. Right at five turns there. Uh, let's go back to starboard or turn the port cylinder going towards starboard. Helm feels good, consistent. I'm not feeling any air bubbles passing through the helm. So let's go shake the motor around a little bit. see back here we don't want to see the cylinder moving side to side more than maybe a quarter or three-eighths half inch tops so we're getting very little if any movement right now you can see the motors right where we want oh yeah everything feels good here all right I'm happy with that it's ready to go back okay so everybody um, what you've seen today is a couple of things. Showed you how easy it is to do a system flush. Got all the fluid out of here. Um, added new fluid in. But it, we, we use Sea Star's recommended methods for the first part of the bleed to get almost all the air out of the system. And then we connected up and used our more traditional uh, bubble purge method that you've seen on our other videos uh, to chase the last few air bubbles out of the system. I'm Tyler with Outboard Specialty Tools. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Contact me anytime if you have any questions. We'll be happy to help you. Thanks.